and welcome back to Boots Over Heels, a Southern Grace clothing podcast hosted by me, Jade, based here at Southern Grace's headquarters in Dallas, Texas. This week, I have a story for you about cheating spouses, a mix-up, and a pair of hot pink sweatpants. This episode is Josie's Pink Sweatpants. Josie had been married to Hunter for a little over a year now. They met at a country western bar. Hunter asked her to dance while she was on a night out with her friends, and they danced to a slow song, and then three more songs after that. He was a fairly good two-stepper, and she liked his dashing bolo tie, cowboy hat, and the fact he was tall and soft-spoken with an adorable accent. He asked her for her number, and she happily entered it into his phone, and then her friends dragged her away from him for the rest of their ladies' night. They were inseparable after that. They texted all day and all night, joking about minions, cows, sheep blocking the road. He had a dog, a black lab, named Gumbo, that was just terribly coordinated, and Hunter kept her entertained with stories about his hijinks at their house. Their first date was a trip to dinner and then the movies, and she was a goner. They started dating seriously, and she learned all about him. For example, he wasn't the best at gift giving. (laughs) giving her overly ruffly shirts, constricting pants, perfume that reminded her of nursing homes. But it was nice of him to try. A couple months later, they were engaged. He didn't quite hit the mark with the ring, a cluster of small diamonds that wrapped in a spiral around a platinum band. But she was happy to have a ring at all, and she was ecstatic to be getting married. They paid for a down payment on a house in the suburbs with red brick walls and a giant window above the front door. Josie was in love, and she started pinning decor ideas and buying furniture for their new place. She met with their neighbors, and she even invited a few to the wedding. She was so happy in their new home. When the wedding came around, Josie compromised on Hunter and his groomsmen wearing jeans and boots as long as they also put on coats and ties. Josie and the girls wore cowboy boots beneath their dresses. The pictures were adorable, and just after her photographer sent them over, they learned that Josie was pregnant. Even more good news. Hunter was shocked at first, but he started getting excited when they put together the nursery in a jungle theme green with painted swinging monkeys and stuffed zebras everywhere. Josie began to take a really active role in her health, staying on top of her doctor's appointments and exercising. They got involved in their local church, and her baby shower was just gorgeous. They were going to have a baby girl, and she was so excited. Josie started a walking club with the other moms in her cul-de-sac. Whitney, who lived across the street with her husband and twin boys, and Tammy, who lived next door, who was also expecting a baby with her ex-husband, Michael. Hunter and Josie were involved in their community. They were healthy. They were married with a white picket fence and a baby on the way. Everything was perfect. Until it wasn't. About four months into the pregnancy, Hunter started to get distant. Josie couldn't figure out why. He started talking to her less, giving her grunts and nods for responses instead of the longer conversations that they used to have. He got less excited about the baby, and soon she realized she was thinking of possible baby names all by herself. She liked the name Rebecca, by the way. Hunter had been so attentive at first, but for some reason he started to pull back. It had been weeks since he had touched her in any way. She figured that maybe he was getting nervous about fatherhood. He kept staring pensively at the front window at their little white picket fence, and he started adding to a huge stack of baby books on his nightstand, so she knew he was thinking about it. She decided to bring it up with him one night after he came home from work late, yet again. She asked him if work was especially stressful lately, and he merely nodded his head, tired. She knew his new job selling cars wasn't exactly his dream, but it was lucrative and he was really good at it. She was pretty nervous, but she forced herself to bring up the topic again. She asked him, So you've been pretty distant lately. Is something going on? He stopped with a fork halfway to his mouth and dropped it on his plate. He gave her a defeated look and his shoulders sagged. Actually, yes, I'm sorry, he said. It's all right, Josie said. Why don't you tell me what's been going on? You've been acting a little strange. He sighed. I've just been so nervous about the baby, and then I... Never mind. She breathed a small sigh of relief that she had been at least partially correct, but she pressed him a bit more. What do you mean, Hunter? Well, I love how healthy you've been lately, and I know the baby can be uncomfortable. She wasn't quite sure where he was going with this. But I've noticed that lately you don't wear much other than your loungewear. 
She looked down at her hot pink sweatpants and her soft t-shirt, and she tried not to feel hurt that her husband didn't like her clothes. Oh, she said. He quickly grabbed her hand and apologized. Honey, forget I said anything. I'm so worked up about being a father, and there's so much change lately in our lives is all. He looked so flustered and adorable that she smiled at him and gave his hand a little squeeze. Don't worry, I understand, and you'll be a great father, I'm sure of it. You think so, he said. No doubt about it. He smiled, and she smiled back, and she started wearing more fashionable maternity wear. Soon, her husband's behavior went back to normal, and she breathed a sigh of relief. She folded up her pink sweatpants, and she bought skinny leggings from the place that Tammy recommended on their walks with the girls, and she found she didn't mind being a tad uncomfortable for Hunter. Plus, Whitney and Tammy were big fans of the change, and they showered her daily with compliments. About eight months into her pregnancy, they reached a year of marriage. They forgot to celebrate their anniversary in the chaos of her pregnancy, but they did cuddle up and watch a movie together, even if they both fell asleep halfway through the movie. In a way, it was romantic how sleepy they were, but Josie hoped they would make up for it after the baby was born. Maybe they could go on a fancy dinner date or even a weekend trip with the baby, once they got accustomed to parental life, of course. They also started having Tammy over for dinner about once a week. Tammy was funny and sweet, and she was about a month behind Josie in her pregnancy. The girls were having the best time reminiscing about their experiences, baby names, parenting styles, and more. It was like having a best friend who understood everything she was feeling. Josie got the impression that Whitney across the street didn't really like Tammy that much, but Whitney could be kind of judgmental, so Josie chalked it up to that. She liked both girls just fine, and she really looked forward to their weekly walks. Until one day on their walk, Tammy couldn't make it. She was having her baby. She texted their group while she was on her way to the hospital. The baby boy was early, only about 37 weeks, not quite premature, but everything worked out all right. It was so exciting and nerve-wracking too, since that meant it would soon be Josie's turn to have her own baby, who was taking her sweet time. Whitney and Josie's walk went as planned, and they talked about Josie's excitement and nervousness, and Whitney gave her a great listening ear and told her she would do amazing when it was her turn. At least she wasn't having twins, Josie said. They laughed. <laughs> Hunter and Josie started wrapping up their preparations and made sure they had everything they needed. A baby bag, bags for the hospital room decoration, bags for clothes, so many bags that some were already waiting in their car, ready to go. When it was her turn, they would be more than ready. Thankfully, a week after Tammy's labor, everything went according to plan. Two days before her actual due date, Josie went into labor in the early morning and Hunter took her to the hospital. They were prepped and ready for the birth, and she was the most excited and nervous that she'd ever been in her entire life. They were put into their own delivery room, and Hunter set up the music, lamps, and blankets for her. She even bought a bouncy ball that she bounced on for a bit. It was exactly what she had in mind, exactly what she had pictured. Except for one thing. She noticed it a couple hours into her labor, in the middle of a contraction. Hunter had left to get her some ice chips, and the nice nurse told her he'd be back in a minute. Except she called Hunter her brother. Your brother will be back with ice chips soon, ma'am. And then the nurse waddled out like she hadn't said anything strange. Josie wondered why they thought Hunter was her brother. Did they look alike? She tried to remember if Hunter had kissed her since they had gotten into the hospital. Apparently not. They'd been so distracted by the craziness in the whirlwind. It wasn't exactly a romantic occasion. She guessed that that was it. When Hunter got back with the ice chips, she thanked him and asked for a kiss. He smiled at her, but he also hesitated a second before giving her a quick peck and sitting back down beside her. She didn't have too much time to think about it, though, since she was having a baby, after all. She talked it up to nerves and just silly nurses. And they had a baby. Hunter held her hand the whole time, cheering her on. The doctor was a funny and nice woman, with large glasses and a calming voice. It felt strange, but Josie was so happy to hear the baby start screaming that she almost cried until the same waddling nurse asked if the uncle wanted to cut the cord. Annoyed that the nurse was ruining an important moment, Josie snapped, harsher than she meant to, that Hunter was her husband, not her brother, that her father would be cutting the cord. The nurse looked completely shocked and silently nodded at her. Josie felt bad, but not too bad, because after all, her baby girl had a father, and he was right next to her, and he was most definitely not her brother. 
and she wanted the woman to stop saying it. Hunter cut the cord, and Josie held their baby girl, and everything was perfect again. Hunter grabbed her bag for her and gave her the new dress that she had made, and they fell asleep in the hospital that night, exhausted. And the next morning, it was time to go home with their baby girl, Rebecca. Hunter went to pack up the bags and pull the car around, and a new nurse came in to give her help with the baby. Josie breathed a sigh of relief that the other nurse was gone. Is Uncle getting the car, she asked sweetly, holding the baby so Josie could change. Josie almost snapped again, but she decided to let it go. Dumb nurses. She just nodded and made a humming sound that sounded sassy even to her ears. How exciting for your family. Two healthy babies in two weeks. Wait, Josie thought. What did she just say? I'm sorry, what? What two babies, Josie said. Well, little Rebecca here. And baby Jeff, of course. How fun for your family to have two babies all at once. Two cords cut in two weeks. She was staring down at the baby and completely missed Josie's face, which was shocked and still. The nurse helped her outside, completely oblivious to Josie's reaction, and left Josie and Rebecca on a bench while Hunter pulled up in their car. Hey, honey, he said, jumping out of the car door. I'll strap her in, gently taking the baby out of Josie's arms. She numbly climbed into the passenger seat, and ten minutes later, they were on their way home, a sleeping newborn safely strapped in the back, and Josie's brain and heart completely fried. She was rewinding the last year they had spent together, going over every small detail. Dating, house, married, pregnant, baby. When did they move in again? How long until she was pregnant? She did it for long enough that Hunter pulled into their driveway at home, and she noticed that Tammy was outside in her front garden, her new baby boy sleeping in a rocker. She noticed that Tammy was outside in her front garden, her new baby boy sleeping in a rocker next to her as she fussed with the flowers in front of her house. Hunter was about to open the door when Josie spoke up and he stopped with his hand on the door handle. Why did the nurse say that baby Jeff is a part of our family? What, he said, half laughing like it was a joke. They kept calling you Rebecca's uncle, and I didn't know why. I thought they were being stupid, she said. They were. She cut him off. How could the nurse have known that we know baby Jeff? I'm not sure, he started, and she cut him off again, as she realized that their front window directly faced Tammy's flower bed, where she was currently kneeling, tending to the soil like she did nearly every day. Unless you were there when he was born? She phrased it like a question, but he didn't say anything, so she asked again. Were you with Tammy when she had baby Jeff? Again, he didn't say anything. I want an answer, Hunter. Were you with Tammy when she had her baby? Yes, he said, his voice soft. Why were you with her in the delivery room, Jeff? Silence again. Why, Josie said, keeping her voice low for the sleeping baby in the back of the car. Did you cut the cord? She beat him to his answer. She was tired of his voice. Because you're sleeping together. Because you're the father, not her ex. Yes, he said. When? What? Josie thought he sounded dumb. When? Her voice started to rise, but she cut it back to a whisper again. Did it start? Right after we heard the news about Becca, you were at the doctor's, and Tammy was out front in her garden alone. Why, Hunter? There must have been something in her voice because he reacted suddenly strongly, his voice loud. Well, you had started to let yourself go, he said. How am I at fault here? His voice was too loud, and Josie started to get nervous for the baby in the back. She was confused about what he was talking about. What are you talking about, she said. I was healthy and moving every day. In sweatpants, he mumbled. Are you kidding me, Josie said. You cheated on me because I was wearing sweatpants. He looked at her full in the face, Tammy gardening behind him through the window, and said, yes, because you let yourself go. It was boring. Rebecca started to cry at all the noise, and Josie suddenly had enough. Well, she said, getting out to unbuckle Becca from the back seat and grab all of the baby bags from the back. Hunter was sitting in the driver's seat, watching her like she might bolt if he moved. 
I'll do you one better, Hunter. I'll let go of one more thing. We're done. I want a divorce. Get out of here and stay somewhere else. I'll leave your crap in the driveway. Josie, come on. It got better after you started dressing nice again. I haven't been with her in weeks. I don't care, Hunter. Josie whisper yelled over Becca's calming cries. I don't want to see you again. Rebecca is my baby too, Josie. She started dumping bags on the driveway so she could carry them in later. Yeah, but so is Jeff, right? Josie said. The baby you had with your mistress. Come on, Hunter. Get out of my house. Get out of my driveway. Get out of my life. And I'll decide if it's best for Becca to have you in her life. You've got enough on your plate anyway, being a new father twice over this week. Josie. He sounded mad, but she slammed the car door against whatever he was about to say and walked with Becca to the front door. Hunter screeched away in his car, leaving all of the bags on the driveway. She jiggled her hands to unlock the front door and heard Tammy yell from her garden, Josie, are you okay? Where did Hunter go? Go to hell, Tammy. <laughs> Josie closed the door to Tammy's flustered noises, leaving the hospital bags in the driveway for the time being. She brought Becca with her into their bedroom, her bedroom and she set her down gently on the bed. Josie tore through the drawers, and she thought she heard the front door open. Hunter, Josie yelled, I told you to get out of here. Becca stirred at her voice, but there was no response from the living room, so Josie kept digging through her clothes until she found her pink sweatpants. Buried beneath a pile of uncomfortable clothes, she bought for a man who cared more about her looks than his own baby. She shucked off her homemade hospital gown and carefully pulled on the pants and a t-shirt, not caring about doing any of it correctly or what she looked like. She pulled back the hair that she had carefully styled that morning into a messy bun and took Becca with her into the living room, moving slowly. She expected Hunter to be standing in the living room, but instead she found Whitney, sitting on the couch with all of Josie's bags, playing on her phone. Hey, hon, I heard you yell at Tammy outside. Josie just stood there for a second, and then she told her what happened. She was close to tears, alone with her new baby. Whitney nodded. Good for you. Now give me that baby girl and tell me more. Josie gratefully passed Becca to Whitney, who looked overjoyed to be holding the newborn, and Josie sat down on the couch next to her. Before she could say anything more, Whitney reached out and patted her knee. I love the sweats, sweetie. Where'd you get them? Josie smiled. And that is Josie's pink sweatpants, everyone. Pretty dramatic, huh? I just want to say, I don't know your story, but if there is someone in your life who doesn't like the way you dress or makes you feel bad about your appearance, you should drop that person from your life. Especially if they are a jerk husband who fathered a baby with your neighbor. But that's pretty specific. <laughs> you should always do and wear whatever makes you happy. Don't forget that. You do not have to compromise who you are, ever. You go out there in your pink sweatpants, in your blue cowboy boots, in a dress or a kimono or whatever makes you happy and you own it. That's why I come to work in my PJs every day. I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, please subscribe and review us on iTunes. It is a huge help. And if you want sneak peeks and behind the scenes information, follow us on our socials at Southern Grace One, the number, for even more. And for transcripts of our episodes, check out the show notes and the Boots Over Heels page on the Southern Grace Clothing website. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Boots Over Heels by Southern Grace, where we understand Southern women because we are Southern women. I'll see you next week, ladies. Bye!